It was announced this week that while the first two Expendables films were rated R, the Expendables 3 will be rated PG-13. The film still promises more deaths than ever. However, most will be due to natural causes. <laughs> right now on the Will Wheaton Project, that thing is headed right for us. But one science fiction dreamboat just might save us all from the Dark Knight's exhibit at Warner Brothers. The dome invades the talk. <laughs> And Planet of the Apes is Andy Serkis crashing our studio. You're going to do great. <laughs> and now, the guy who's going to make it all better once he finishes his burrito, Will Wheaton. Listen, and that's a guy I appreciate it, but I haven't been a dreamboat since 1987, and even then we were pushing the limits of what a dreamboat is. Nerds, welcome to the Will Wheaton Project. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is where we tell you everything about science fiction for a half an hour. After that, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you all to leave. I prefer to drink alone. <laughs> this 4th of July box office was the worst in decades. It was helped along by Earth to Echo, which opened in a disappointing sixth place. This movie's about a group of friends who receive strange messages with maps on their cell phones and wind up in the desert with a weird extraterrestrial. The movie is basically about Grindr. <laughs> Under the domes, Dean Norris visited the talk, and it didn't get creepy at all. So, does the dome follow you everywhere? You know, it... Well, if I'm gonna be stuck under the dome, yeah, 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 that is actually an episode of Under the Dome that I would watch. <laughs> they, they all run out of air, right? That's what happens? <laughs> On this week's Teen Wolf, Peter explains the odds of accidentally turning someone into a werewolf. What do you know about people being turned by a scratch? Claws have to go pretty deep. But it's possible. Like, if you clawed out someone's throat? Well, yeah, it's possible. It's also beyond rare. I mean, we're talking one in the... What are the odds of overacting? <laughs> One in. <laughs> One. <laughs> this Sunday brought us a new episode of the Ultimate Spider-Man Web Warriors, which, despite its name, has nothing to do with trolling people on the internet. <laughs> this week, the Guardians of the Galaxy visited Spider-Man, and Nova provided a most unintentionally pornographic entrance. <laughs> Here's my helmet! <laughs> little friendly advice for you, Nova. Here's my helmet is not the best foreplay. <laughs> we all know it's the final season of True Blood, and a lot of people are tuning in to watch it. But for some reason, they're not sticking around to watch the first season of The Leftovers. It seems like a great match to me, and the promotions department at HBO agrees, which is why they did this. This July, HBO is your Sunday night destination for sizzling summer fun. First, bang it with your favorite bangers on True Blood. Cool characters, hot bods, and dirty minds. But don't touch that dial, because we're keeping the good times rolling with The Leftovers. 2% of the world is gone, and everyone is sad. Sad, sad. Angry, sad. Smoking in bed, sad. Asking for guidance from a deer, sad. And do you love people staring into space? Because we've got people staring into space all night long. So head on over to HBO for True Blood and The Leftovers. You'll have so much fun, you'll jump for joy. HBO, Sunday night. <laughs> In, uh, in this episode of The Leftovers, that scene with the deer goes on for 27 minutes. 
So it's easy to understand why so many people have stayed with True Blood for seven seasons. So whether you're a vampire, a werewolf, or just a sad drunk, you are always welcome at Sam's Bar, where everybody knows your name. Wait a minute. That sounds familiar. Making your way in Bon Tom today takes everything you got. <laughs> Vampires, werewolves, fairies, and telepathic blondes. Wouldn't you like a hot three way? <laughs> Sometimes you want to bang where all the sex is really strange. <laughs> Coming up, we celebrate Batman 75th with Batman. And later, Andy Serkis takes Will to school. I could not have been more wrong. When the Will Wheaton Project continues. Thank you very much. Welcome back, everybody. So I love Samuel L. Jackson as Nick Fury. In fact, Nick Fury is one of my favorite non-mutant Marvel superheroes. So when I was a kid, Nick Fury looked sort of like this, right? He had the eye patch and the gray temples. He's sort of like an aging pirate Mitt Romney. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been wondering what happened to this Nick Fury, right? Well, it turns out he's been put into a witness relocation program and I found him. Do I need an attorney? If you're asking this question, you probably do. One of the most important reasons for consulting with an attorney is to decide whether you need representation or not. This can only be decided after meeting with experienced counsel. I'm Edward Mouton, and I want to help you. I led S.H.I.E.L.D. to victory over HYDRA. Let me lead you to the compensation you deserve. Okay, so not only did we find Nick Fury, we also found Fat Polly Walnuts from The Sopranos, <laughs> and the Burgermeister from Santa Claus is Coming to Town, and Augra, Keeper of Secrets from The Dark Crystal. <laughs> Seriously, where is this place? Uh, we would like it very much if you would send us your own judges. Just use the hashtag FuryJudge. <laughs> All right, everybody, grab an old-timey diving helmet. It is time to go into Deep Cable. If Deep Cable has taught us anything, it's that Bigfoot is surprisingly easy to find. <laughs> but what about his Mongolian cousin, the Almasti? Well, for that, we turn to Nat Geo's Bigfoot, The New Evidence. Take it away, completely credible person. This uh, creature can speak. <laughs> <laughs> the inner thoughts of the dude uh, interviewing the guy. Don't laugh at him. Don't laugh at him. Just don't laugh. Don't do not laugh at him. We're first. We're playing baseball. We're playing baseball. We're playing baseball. <laughs> for a deeper look at this beautiful language, check out El Masti for Dummies. <laughs> Destination America has a show called Monsters and Mysteries in America, which I like to call, guys, this totally happened. And he's like, Mom, there is something out here. I'm not lying. All of a sudden, there comes one as big as you can be. That alien's field report confirmed there is no intelligent life on Earth. <laughs> also, that cabin glass is immune to shotguns. <laughs> okay, you know what's great? When sci-fi invades the local news. 
So let's take a look at Sci-Fi Local News. <laughs> that like local news sound always makes me so happy. <laughs> and they don't use it anymore. Bastards. <laughs> Disney recently caught some flack after releasing a line of Star Wars toys that didn't include Princess Leia. This led to a spirited discussion on Chicago's WGN News, which got a little too real for comfort. Disney launched Star Wars merchandise earlier this year without many Princess Leia items. Disney promises lots of Princess Leia stuff coming soon, just maybe not this. Why not? That's her That's most right. famous... Yeah, gold bikini. I'd like to see Carrie Fisher wear that for the next movie, too. I'm sure Carrie Fisher would like to see yeah, Carrie yeah, Fisher yeah, wear yeah, that right. for the next movie. <laughs> Time is tough. <laughs> next up is the weather. Followed by the icy black abyss. <laughs> KCAL 9 News right here in Los Angeles. Where am I Los Angeles at? <laughs> it's the easiest pander in history. <laughs> KCAL 9 recently ran a story on a dispute between neighbors that involved voodoo. So this should be interesting. A neighbor dispute over lawn ornaments, of all things, has taken a nasty turn in Arkansas. A woman named Rebecca Kroom says her neighbor scares her with the masks and suits of armor in his yard. She says they're all linked to voodoo, and they're causing her property value to drop. He comes out and he goes... And he puts the smoke into the air like a dust. <laughs> Lady... Take the time to learn Spanish and stop embarrassing yourself. <laughs> I sense a love connection. <laughs> well, we will be back in two and two. <laughs> Stay tuned. Andy Circus takes on Will, and we celebrate with Batman when the Will Wheaton Project continues. <laughs> oh, I am really excited to have one of the greatest motion capture actors in history on the show today. He has played Gollum, King Kong, and he is Caesar in Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. To honor his appearance, and out of respect for his time, I'm going to make him watch bad movies with me as we play How Will They Bite It? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Andy Serkis. Hello. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, before we play the game, I just want to know if it is weird to be in front of a green screen and you're actually yourself. It's really, really weird. I've never seen such a green screen that has so much life and vitality. Oh, that's the audience. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> the render farm we have to build this audience it's is, it takes up six buildings is, in downtown Los Angeles. Yeah, I mean, real-time audience. That's yeah, incredible. It's really great, right? And you'll notice that they're totally anti-alias. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> All right, so check it out. In this game, you and I will watch a scene where the character is definitely going to die. Then we will try to guess how they will bite it. Uh, so you buzz in when you think you know the answer. And okay. we'll both get a chance to guess. We just really wanted to have a buzzer because yeah. I'm a big fan of buzzers. Uh, <laughs> you're going to do great. <laughs> now, everybody, please keep in mind that neither Andy nor I have seen these clips before. So let's do this. Roll the first clip. Chris, where are you? The joke is over. Please. Yeah, oh, go, yes, go. She dies of embarrassment. <laughs> uh, her weave comes to life and strangles her. <laughs> All right, first, this is the last one. Ah! <laughs> I don't know what's wow. less believable, the graphic dino croc or the fact that somehow she didn't know that it was immediately <laughs> behind her. Uh, I'm giving you a thousand points because she clearly, if she didn't die of embarrassment, she should have. That was from Dino Croc. <laughs> All right, next clip. Wow. 
I'll tell you what didn't kill him, smoking. <laughs> this message has been brought to you by the tobacco industry, which has had your best interests at heart since they were founded. <laughs> Actually, no, because what really happened was the camera just kept pushing in, and he didn't come off his mark, and it just kept going in. <laughs> and it went straight through his He's head. Killed, killed by the camera. Yeah. All right, let's, let's find out how he bites it. <laughs> Hashtag smoking kills, kids. <laughs> um, I could not have been more wrong. I mean, like, what happened is exactly what I said would not happen. It was from Ghost Voyage, and uh, I'm going to give you 75 million points. <laughs> and now to our final clip, which is traditionally worth five times as many points as the rest, thereby rendering the rest of the game moot. So, Andy, for whatever five times 75 million is, let's find out how they bite it. Um, there's laughing gas inside that canister. Okay? Yeah. He puts it in, he has this massive, massive, hilarious laugh on, and his lungs explode, thereby taking down the entire helicopter. All right. In an effort to escape from the laughing gas canister, he jumps out of the helicopter and plummets to his death. <laughs> So the thing is, in our defense, nobody had Mega Piranha leaps from the water and eats the entire helicopter in the pool. And if you did have that, you're a liar. Um, I have tallied up the scores in my head, and uh, Mr. Andy Circus, you are the winner. Okay. How do they bite it? Um, you will receive our brand new one-player version of the home game where you sit all alone on the bed and contemplate your own mortality. No points are awarded. <laughs> Don't play it now. Wait until you get home. <laughs> Everybody, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes comes out on July 11th. Andy Circus, thank you so much oh, for coming and playing. Heaven. Up next, shout-outs and super cuts. Plus, holy cow, Batman 75, and we've got him. When the Will Wheaton Project continues. This week, an amazing new exhibit opened up at the Warner Brothers studio lot in honor of Batman's 75th birthday. And while everyone in the lamestream media was over there taking pictures of it, we were hanging out with the real Batman on his 75th birthday. Take a look. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. Keep working! I hate crime. Those are my thoughts. Thanks for watching Fox yeah. News. Give me a hug. I love you both. Give me a hug. I won't tell your husband. I like your tats, man. Thanks, man. You have them any place else or just on your arm? May I offer you a butterscotch? Oh, that's a boy. Do you want a picture of me? Okay. <laughs> All right, here you go. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so that is not what I expected when they told me we were doing Batman forever. <laughs> it's okay. We're not going to be doing it for very long. Oh. Oh, no, I'm the worst person in the world, but it's time for shout-outs! Yeah! Shout out to Entertainment Tonight's Rob Marciano for asking the tough questions. All right, Roxy, it's time to play a little bit of Name That Tune. You ready? Okay. Name this. Who you gonna call? Hi, Rob, it's Will Wheaton. The name of the game is Name That Tune, not the name of the tune is in that tune. <laughs> Shout out to Canadian Television for their eclectic morning show bookings. 
I heard the, the sequel for Wolf Cop got greenlit before e even the release happened. I know, it's crazy. It's uh, unheard of, but basically it's like you said, uh, horror is a great genre to get into with films. <laughs> Please remember to have your guests spayed and neutered. <laughs> Shout out to the most horrifying makeup tutorial I have ever seen in my life. I am going to do a makeup transformation video. I know it's kind of creepy and a little, little bit cute at the same time. <laughs> kind of creepy? <laughs> kind of creepy? That is 100% all creepy. <laughs> and I guess it is kind of cute. So it's a big week for Walking Dead fans as the show has gone back into production for season five. And like you, we have been wondering, what is the equivalent of a zombie in the dog world? <laughs> well, we find out in this week's Supercut. Till next time, play more games. <laughs>